record, right? So however much of us grow up, uh, we are recording. So <laughs> apologies, folks. So let's, let me, uh, I think I should remove that. And if I do screen share, I don't know if you're going to get everything that I've got getting because you don't really want that, do you? Uh, okay. So uh, this is just the, uh, the title page. I'm using that to fill up the screen. And just listen, if you want some entertainment, just look at me. I'm completely ass and brazzled. I've been using Zoom for about three weeks now with absolutely no problem. But uh, this is, I've got to confess, this is the first webinar. And it's not quite as simple as the other way of using it. Uh, and I, if, if I end up stranded here, there's no way I can deliver this webinar. I need my experts. I'm not a cosmetologist. I'm going to be kind of a referee. Uh, so what can I say? <laughs> thanks for you know. Thanks all for coming. Uh, talk among yourselves, as it were. <clears throat> Usually you can sort of interact with people and you can post questions and things. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe you could uh, see something like that uh, where you. Post your questions, but I'm not seeing where they're coming up. So, oh, I you know. Let's look at this other place. Where are questions and answers? There we go. No open, no open questions. All right. So, if somebody, if you could hear me, would somebody post a question? Even if it just says hi, Dr. Keith, uh, then at least I'll know we're functioning. Because <clears throat> uh, it's kind of scary floating up here on my own. I've got to tell you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I said, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, darling. <laughs> okay, so uh, as I said, I'm in a little bit of a flap. I don't know where my participants are. Uh, I was, uh, sounds like underwater, Roger Barr is saying. I, and, but Sarah's saying, I hear you fine. Roger, you might need to check your gear or maybe just turn up the sound on your computer. Uh, I don't know. Um, come here, please. You see, I'm talking to Vivian, okay. Uh, you need to call. John, I'll find out if there's a problem. He should have been on there. I know. Okay. Um, I can see you. I can always resend the invite, you know, if he's not got it or something. Okay. Well, yeah, maybe I should just do that. Um, okay, so, John, and then scan our news. <laughs> I hope I'll laugh at this tomorrow, folks. At the moment, I'm pouring a sweat. Uh, Technology is wonderful when it works, which is about half the time, in my experience. Uh, anyway, there's a whole bunch, you know. Uh, we, we've got 100 seats, and we're claiming up all the time. We're past the 75 mark just now. And I'm afraid, very much afraid, some people are going to be unlucky. Um, I should probably need to book more seats next time. Anyway, all this is uh, dirty washing in-house. It's not really of any of your concern, and I'm sorry just to apologize for any fluster and flap, but it will, it is being recorded. So, oh, and that's another point. Yes, let me, let me record it on my screen too. Uh, so that, uh, yeah, just click a couple of things, hang on. Uh, <coughs> so that, uh, you know, belt and braces have done a screen capture recording. Um, Zoom says it's recording the webinar, and we can share that way, so nobody's actually going to miss out. And uh, I'm glad about that. As I said, I think the number of attendees is, is skyrocketing. I think we'll certainly pass 100 because a lot of people show up, you know, in the first five minutes after you start. Uh, okay, so I'll go back to this, the, the uh, PowerPoint screen so that you can see that. Um, and I don't know what else you can see. Sarah or Roger, could you tell me, are you seeing these funny little boxes? I've got two open boxes, uh, one of which is questions, and I hope only me can see the questions. That would be typical. That would be correct. And uh, <clears throat> so somebody else says it sounds like I'm underwater. Uh, okay. And Laurie's got an invalid. ID number says she can't get in. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, okay. Uh, I've sent her another chat, so she should. Uh, sorry, another invite, so she should 
Oh, I'll sign in again, I think. Let me send it again to her. Okay. Uh, in fact, she may only get in as a, I just thought, as an attendee. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm probably, I'm going to have to stop my screen share, folks. Just stand by, please be kind to me. I, I need to get my panelists quick. Uh, and I can't invite panelists. I've just realized it will only invite other participants. So I'm going to stop my screen share and, and panic. <laughs> uh, I need to be in Safari, actually, in, in, in the program. That's what's going wrong here, I think. I can't, can't believe this. Are you at it? No, this is. Post attendee, you wouldn't mind we don't post attendee. Yeah, please just try to log on. And send you another one because you realize it's not inviting you as a, you know, somebody. So, my webinars, let's find the participants and resend the invites. Right. So you can hear John. No, I can't mm -hmm. see or hear John, huh? Absolutely not. So if we, all right, let's see if I get. Okay. Uh, according to my calculations, folks, I've got two minutes in which to assemble my team. <laughs> oh, great. Um, oh, there we are. Okay, <clears throat> so I've resent the advice to the panelists. Now in the hands of the gods. I've got Billy looking almost as sweating as much as me. <laughs> um, but I've resent the invite, so we should join shortly. I need the parties, the uh, panelists, you see, because they get special access to the, the video and audio. So uh, John just came in as a, an attendee. That didn't work. Uh, Linda, Linda Traylon. Did you mistype it, Billy? We called Taylor, or is it Trey Law? Um, anyway, Linda, do I still sound as if I'm underwater? I'm finding that puzzling uh, because there are lots of people on the call. He's fine. Yeah, I mean. Ah, ah, no, no. So tell John to do it. Oh, so I'm sweating a lot less suddenly. Thanks, Viv. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, good luck. Thanks, bye. <laughs> You're on. Laurie, you're on. People can I'm on. You. I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you, I can hear you very well. Elton. Oh, good. good. Uh, again, Sarah, Linda, uh, Roger, uh, can, you, can you hear? John's on. Okay, good luck. <laughs> I think John's on. Have you got John, Keith? Not yet. Yes, oh, I've got him here. I can hear him, but I can't oh, see him. Perhaps we don't need to see his pretty face. No, as long as we can hear him. Uh, yeah, you're the good looking one, so I'm not too worried about that. <laughs> uh, okay, so th there are some sound issues. I just hope it doesn't bedevil us, and we'll just have to be confident, as it were, and pray for the best that you just keep talking. Some people might lose sound, and at least one situation there is where somebody could hear fine, somebody else couldn't, so we can't. Can't keep stopping and stalling. Okay, so I'm going to host the slides, Lorraine, and you're going to do most of the talking. John, if you can see the screen, is also obviously well, welcome to comment, but I can't see John. So, John. Um, so John, are you going to do the technical stuff? Yeah, I can do it. You can hear me. Ah, we've got John. Okay. Now, listen. There's a cute thing about Zoom, which is that when you start speaking, your picture comes up. Oh, I see. Uh, not in my case, because I've chosen screen share to slow, show the slides. But there you are, you popped up because you're talking, and then Lorraine, if you speak a word or two, you'll pop up. Okay. Louder, more. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, there you go, there's your picture. So that's, okay. a, that's a cute little aspect of this webinar technology. Uh, now listen, we've got close on 100 people. It passed the 85 mark when I was last looking at the moment. I'm not even interested in panicking all over the place. <laughs> but I'll, I'll let you know in due course. But I mean, there's a lot of people on this call. So I think it's very important to, yeah, you see it's saying 103. Now there only are 100 seats. So there'll be a few disappointed people. Uh, I just want you to know that despite all the faffing and flapping around and fingers and thumbs, there are a lot of people 
uh, with us. Uh, thank you all for coming, folks. And I know it's a fascinating topic. Uh, we're all fighting aging in our ways, and of course the girls are the important ones to us, and they, they seem to fight it more than us. But a lot of people want any help they can to keep those good looks and keep on rocking and rolling and partying as boomers until the, you know, the very last day we want to look good when we check out, right? <laughs> so anything new and, new and exciting and different, it's got people's attention. And I think rightly so, because, you know, as we're going to be talking about, the, the traditional methods of doing these things, you know, sticking polyfiller in your face, and torturing and poisoning your nerves with Botox and so on, it's not a good way to do it. It just isn't. And in fact, you know, John, for, for years and years, my saying has been the best cosmetics that a woman can use is what you eat. You know, if you have a, a, a low inflammatory diet and eat good foods, whole foods that are nutritious and, and don't include any food allergies in, in the diet that you eat, then you're going to look good. And back in the 80s, I, I got started without intending to in anti-aging because I put people on a good exclusion diet, you know, like the paleo diet, the caveman diet, as we used to call it, and people would come in and say, wow, you know, I, look, I feel 10 years younger, 15 years younger, and people are stopping me and saying, what are you on? You look so young, you look great, you look terrific, and so on. So all of these factors, of course, you and I know as practitioners are important, but what we're going to talk about is a cute little extra. In fact, cute's the wrong word. I don't want to downgrade it. It's, it's really quite amazing. And uh, just to remind you, John and Laurie, I've invited people who've got uh, existing microcurrent devices. You know, we're not just going to talk about this one device. We're going to talk about the technique. And uh, you know, if you've already bought yourself a scan out, it'll work. This is good for it. So listen, listen up, folks. If you haven't got a device, you might consider one of these because the prices are ridiculous. You know, I was a bit shocked actually how inexpensive these things are compared to scanners and enarts and other microcurrent stuff. Okay, so uh, people might know you by name, you two, but you better explain who you are. So two minutes of bio, John. Who is John Hache? Will the real John Hache stand up? <laughs> well, yes, hello, hello everybody. My name is John Hache. I'm a doctor of natural medicine and have been for about 35 years. The last 17 years I've spent, I spent um, becoming a specialist in pain management and in wound healing. And incidentally, uh, when you repair wounds, when you help people's body fix itself, we, we understand right away that the face and, and what's, what happens to the facial features are also in the same involvement. If you watch a wound heal and the body's integrity come back come back into its natural position, then the same thing can happen with your face because they both, they both have collagen fiber. So this is pretty well my specialty over the last 17 years has been how to repair the body. And aging is kind of repair, I guess. It is. It <laughs> certainly is. Making good. All right, Murray, go for it, then. Well, I'm a doctor of natural medicine as well, have been for not quite as long as John, probably 25 years, but I've had an interest in the anti-aging field for quite some while now, just because I feel that I wanted to do something for my friends, my family, and all those people out there. And it doesn't just include the women, it is the men as well, because we're all interested in, in that field. So, yeah, um, it's just... A passion to I like to make people feel well and be well that's good now listen you just reminded me in saying men too you told me it was three or four years ago you told me the story the wonderful story about that guy who was doing some cosmetology with a microcurrent device and was so changed his wife couldn't spot him easily when he got to the airport you want to share that with us remember it was you wasn't it that told me that it was, yes, because yeah. it was a guy that um, we met him. Actually, he was using the Senar device, one of the Skina, the, old, the older devices. And we met him on a course, and he had been using the device for quite some while. And just really on his face, because he didn't have much else going on. And then his passport photograph, when he was going through the airport, they didn't believe it was him because he looked so much younger. And it was like, 
when you saw his photograph and you saw him, you could see a huge, huge difference. You know, the skin was very much tighter. Um, his cheekbones looked more defined, you know, but he had a better quality of skin. He had a better color to his skin. He looked really good. And I was like, that was my first introdu introduction to these devices in this sort of field. Right, I forgot it was the passport, not his wife. That's early Alzheimer's, folks, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> it was years ago that Laurie told me that story. <laughs> okay, so shall we move on then? Okay, let's take a look at the first slide. You choose between you who's gonna do the talking, you know, for each one. Oh, can't even choose, advance the slides, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, oh, here we go, right, got it, okay. Uh, it's, it's a click mouse button, it's not a down cursor as usual. Uh, I know what I'm doing, so we're good. All right. So, come on, let's do, uh, let's try. Oh, then, John. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Botox, Botox is, uh, because I, I visit many pain, um, pain uh, uh, presentations a little bit everywhere. And uh, Botox is always present. And uh, women, it, it's been it's been a fad thing for maybe a decade now, maybe maybe more. I'm more not longer than that. Yeah, I would say that's yeah. a lot. And and Botox, of course, there is a manufacturer. There is a company that makes this product, and uh, they are looking for different ways to be able to sell their product. And one of them is maybe migraine headaches, injecting it here and injecting it there. But basically. Botox is a very, very nasty botulism. <laughs> it, it, it is a, a nasty a bit of micro. Uh, a, few, a few milligrams of that could poison about 500 people, can't they? It's it certainly could. I mean, we find it in, on, we'll find it in the forest floor and just about anywhere, but, but if you get it into a wound, you, you'll end up dead in a hurry. Yeah. So what, what we're hoping is that the company that makes this product will actually attenuate it and the, the worst thing, the best thing that can happen, um, the worst thing is you could die, but the best thing that can happen is that it will only paralyze the muscle that it's injected into. And if it goes wrong, it will paralyze a lot more. <laughs> and there, there's, uh, there are many lawsuits that involve this company that makes this product. And uh, they fear that they, it, it could bankrupt them. So they're trying desperately to get into other fields as well. This yeah. is why they, they, they use migraine headaches. But they're also in other products. So, so I'm seeing them scampering around trying to find other, other areas that are not as risky. Right. I had a little run-in with them about 10 years ago. I, I, was taught, I went to Italy and was taught what, we, what I call homeopathic Botox. It's made by a guy called Massimo De Belli, an Italian MD, and it was a Guna product. And Guna put on a, a seminar for us, and we went to Milan, had a great time, and learned how to do this homeopathic technique where you inject it, but it's, it's homeopathic, so there's no toxic anything. And it's, in fact, we don't even inject homeopathic Botox. No, in, never. Homeopathic, uh, you know, uh, um, herbs and, and good stuff like that. Uh, and can restructure the face. But it, so I started calling it homeopathic Botox. Uh, never, ne next thing, I've got to see some desist letter from the company saying you're not allowed to use the name Botox. It's a registered name. And we'll screw you yeah. around and try and do it. The, the problem with Botox at its base, I mean, let's say if it, if it does work right, uh, it's injected to treat certain muscular conditions and cosmetically remove wrinkles by temporarily paralyzing those muscles. It may, but it'll only last about three months. Now, if you like the look that it gives you, it means that you have to go back to your doctor and get injected every three months. Right. People don't usually like themselves a whole lot anyway, so they may want to try to inject them. I mean, what a money spinner, you know, give a patient something they need and have to have and will quickly get addicted to, i.e. looking 20 years younger, and yet they have to keep spending. Oh, what a business model. <laughs> That's a great business model. Well, listen, this is, it, it can go wrong. We know it can go seriously wrong. And there's hundreds of pages like this on the internet. You found Meg, who is not a bad looking gal, I didn't think she looks an absolute fright now. Uh, it's terrible, isn't it? And then, you know, we've got another one. I used it in the promotional emails. Kylie Minogue, who has a, I mean, obviously she was much younger on that. But, you know, she had a natural sweet face. And then there's this ghastly plastic 
thing that looks like it's glued on the front of her face. It almost looks like a mask, doesn't it? It does, yeah, exactly. It looks uh, like out of a movie character, the mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Horror movie. <laughs> yeah, and if you painted it white, it could be one of those Japanese drama masks, you know, yeah. no mask, uh, as in NLH, you know, no drama. So, you know, not necessarily, at least people have got shed loads of money, so if it goes wrong for them, you know, you and us guys and the ordinary folks have much less chance of getting it right. We don't have super rich megastar international, cos uh, what are they called, cosmetic doctors, what are they called? Uh, you know, the special celebrity people. Uh, we, we just get the ordinary stuff and the ordinary treatment from ordinary half-trained people. We're more at risk is the way I see it. Uh, anyway, go on, talk to us more, John. The technicals about Botox and why not to? Uh, and there's probably a lot of people on my subscribe list. Uh, one, one of the things that they're discovering now is that Botox will actually change your brain. Anytime that you paralyze any part of your muscles, your brain must now readapt itself. That's true, yes. Passages are not getting out. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's almost like if you, if you go to a dentist and have your tooth frozen, then don't eat when you get home because you're you're going to eat the inside of your mouth. Yeah. You have to reprogram your brain, you see. So the, uh, the toxin can affect the way nerves will behave and may inhibit the release of vital brain chemicals as well. Right. Uh, oh. And the fact are very short-lived. I mean, three months is not a long time to have to go back and have to submit yourself to this all over again. And they're not cheap either. So I don't know how much Botox runs for. Uh, Usually it's the girls on Fifth Avenue in New York City would get a bunch of girls together and they go out shopping and then go into their Botox party. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a Fifth uh, Avenue in New York City thing. Several hundred dollars up to a thousand. Yeah. So now the other thing is that the Botox may be uh, transported um, uh, by nerves back to the central nervous system, back to your brain. And, and it, it's the neurologists are having a serious look at it. Right. Okay. Now, the Allergan company that make this product have three major lawsuits against them, I mean for millions of dollars, uh, where Botox has actually caused brain damage. Mm. Oh. And that one of the things that you're hoping when they, when they make a lot of this stuff, that you, you're dealing with a third party and you're hoping that they're, they're, they're managing the quality of this product properly because it won't it doesn't have to go much wrong to cause a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just too poisonous, just far too dangerous. Okay, tell us a bit about the science then, how can microcurrent therapy alter the skin and anatomy and structure? Now, we know uh, collagen is a, is a big deal. Uh, collagen is the most ubiquitous material within your body. Maybe 70% of the protein of your body is actually collagen. Now collagen is, is, is also, also forms a, 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 a very crystal-like substance that keeps you from falling apart. If you fell off the sofa uh, and, and the watermelon fell beside you, chances are the watermelon would break open and you would not, you know. You spring back into your normal position. Yeah, have you ever dropped a baby? They pass around, don't they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, don't drop them on purpose, I hope. I was going to say, <laughs> don't drop <laughs> one. <laughs> but they really bounce. <laughs> uh, I, 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 you know, I, I, I find I always look for the funny part of life, but you know, things can happen. But uh, one of the one of the bits of research was done by a fellow by the name of Robert Becker, who's a. Uh, um, he, he was a surgeon that lived uh, back in the 80s, 90s, where he did a lot of research on, on collagen. Now, this is, let me explain, John. This is Robert O. Becker, who wrote The Body Electric. I think everyone That is the that. one, the same yeah. fellow. Yeah. An orthopedic surgeon, so he knew a lot about bones and bone structures. And he was looking for uh, uh, what could be electrically conductive within the body that seemed to, to, to retain a certain amount of electricity after a break or an injury. And he, uh, uh, he, found, he found that uh, collagen fiber, when you, when you mash it all up, uh, and it, it loses its properties. 
But when you take a little bit of that mashed up collagen and you put it into a Petri dish uh, in a laboratory and you pass a slight electrical current through it, like you can see in this little sch schematic that I picked up in his book, it, the, the mashed up collagen lines up again like uncooked spaghetti strands. Now, right away when I saw that, I said, oh my goodness, what a wonderful idea to be able to fix bone because bone is fundamentally collagen. But some lady said to me, oh my gosh, is, is, is it collagen that keeps my face from going south? <laughs> and I said, I believe it is. <laughs> <laughs> he said, what would happen if I put a slight electrical current through my face with it, with that that mashed up collagen that's heading south, would it head it back up north again? <laughs> I said, well, chances are, let's give it a try. Uh, sure. And uh, we did try it, and oh my gosh, we saw a big, a big difference. I wasn't really interested in 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 that part of health, but uh, if you look at if you look at my wife Lori, Lori, Lori is in is in Vancouver Island right now, and I'm in Saint Louis Obispo down in Southern California. Now. Normally we're, we, we're not apart, but when we are together. Now I look at Lori and if you see, Lori is 10 years younger than I am. And Lori has not changed in the 17 years that we have been together. Oh, I have. I oh, really have. Come on. I mean, microscopically you have. <laughs> but I needed to do something to be able to follow. And, and I was getting tired of being called her, her grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, it's so, uncomfortable, isn't it? <laughs> I said, maybe there is something to this facial thing after all. <laughs> so, right. it, yes. So, so, uh, so I, got, I got interested and uh, we worked with a, um, a company and for, at the beginning with Skinar, and uh, we we uh, we worked at uh, coming out with a program. Now Skinar never had a facial program, did they, uh, Lori? No, they didn't. We had to put it together. So we put a facial program together because we knew that when people look in a mirror, <laughs> this is something just on the on the by. When you look at a mirror and if you feel lonely, you shouldn't think that you are only looking at yourself. You're looking at 50 trillion cells looking back at you. So you should never be lonely. <laughs> I sure remember that one. That's clever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was on my screen, John. I can't see what's coming up, so I'll just have to take a shot at it. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Here's a good uh, a picture of what healthy collagen looks like. This is when your face is in, is in tip-top shape and it holds all of the convectors and the features in the proper place. Right. You see how striated it is. Yeah. Um, and so it's almost like, like a, 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 what we call a, um, a communication system. Well, it looks like grain, actually. Not almost like a wood. Grainy and very linear. <laughs> We've got a grain. Okay. But, but remember, it's a cross-section slice, folks. We're not yeah. actually grainy, but this is a very thin <laughs> slice of tissue by the grain. It, it, this, this is what keeps that girl's face in, in place. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, well, maybe we jumped a bit. So do you want to up the pace a bit? Now we're talking about meridians and... Yeah. Uh, when, when you when you have a Botox injection, you're only paralyzing a muscle. Yeah, and it swells and and and, and it gives you a look of, of of roundness or firmness, but it isn't. It's just swelling. When when you when you look at this picture, you also see the same collagen fibers, but they are they carry information to organs and systems according to to traditional Chinese medicine. So when you are treating your face, in principle, you're also treating the organs of your body. Well, that's a, a nice If point. you're using the right device, you have to use a device that carries uh, very friendly information. It can't be aggressive information. Friendly information is the same way that your brain uses to communicate with your organs. 
or that your heart uses to communicate with your system, this is what you want to introduce into onto your face. And that information will be carried because we use a sinusoidal wave, which is the simplest wave that we know of in nature. A bird sound is a sinusoidal wave. Yes. You know, we carry that information through the, the, the meridians on your face to all of the organs and systems within your body. So you're giving yourself a cellular makeover when you're working with the proper frequencies. Right, so it's not just electricity, let's make that clear. It's got to be some biologically intelligent, shall we say, messages that the body would understand. It's in body language, it's not just, you know, zap, zap with some scaled down mains electricity, for example. That wouldn't yeah. work. If you use a frequency other than a, than a body friendly frequency, what you're doing is you're stressing the body and you're going into a fight or flight stance instead of saying, oh my goodness, I've got information flowing in. Right. So we're going to be talking about a range of devices in a minute and mentioning the different capabilities, but they all have in common then varying degrees of that biologically friendly message system that's delivered as a microcurrent, a terribly, terribly tiny current, but the body still hears the signals and responds to the message, yeah? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what's the, well, uh, maybe we should get Boris to take over at some point. Uh, this is part of the Ori evolution, right? So what are we seeing here? Well, here we're seeing, if you, it, it's actually every, when we work the face, when we do a facial with a microcurrent device, um, we are actually, as John's just said, working every meridian. So we're working every organ and system within the body. So if we know that we're having a problem with a certain area, when you take a look at that, you can often see a fine line or a wrinkle or whatever. And that can indicate a problem, whether it's with your bladder, whether it's with your kidney or whatever. So you can, from just doing your facial, work out... Uh, work out the problems that you have going on with your system. I do know that, you know, I often suffer from kidney and bladder issues. I know it's also in Chinese medicine, my fear factor. But I know that I will get the, a wrinkle will come on the area of a bladder point, or I will get the dark circles under my eyes, which I know is because my kidneys are not doing well at the time. So when you get to learn how to do a facial and how to read your face, it's much, much easier for you to also read what's going on in your body and to resolve the problem at the same time as looking after your face, your skin, and making yourself look good. Can I ask you a, a question then, Maria? Uh, we're talking about wrinkles and lines, but what about bags under the eyes? If you go and hit those, will they tend to recede? I mean, like yes, they do, because I find that that's often when, um, when you have the bags, it's often a water retention. So if you use the device in, you're gonna resolve the water retention problem, um, but you're also, you'll find that the, the coloration will change. Um, but it can take some while depending on why you have the problem and what is going on. So sometimes using the device then on the whole meridian will actually help you even more. So you can use this device on that or one of the other devices. Right. So as well as getting this great cosmetic effect, we're getting some good Chinese traditional medicine thrown in. Totally. Yeah, yes. great. Okay. Love it, folks. Uh, I think the, the chart's pretty self-explanatory, and if people would not be expected to remember that. But if you make a copy of that and keep it nearby, folks, you can know what you're working on. Uh, and certainly, I've got the beginnings of bags under my eyes. I think I'll <laughs> kidney, or probably my liver. Maybe I should drink less wine. <laughs> right? Why is this? Why is this picture changed the lady's life? One of you explain. Well, uh, th this happened all within one hour in one single treatment. Uh, she's my sister-in-law, uh, my brother's wife. And uh, she couldn't believe, you know, that doing this facial in one hour would, would change that much. Wow. I mean, it's pretty dramatic, isn't it? Uh, she's still got wrinkles and some signs of age, but it looks much firmer on the right. It looks mushy and, you know, kind of pastry kind of skin and tissues on the left and it's got definite tone and build and structure on the right. right that's amazing just one hour one hour 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. One hour when she saw herself in the mirror, and it's it's almost like you change you change your whole attitude towards yourself. That's why yeah. I say it kind of changed her life. Mm. She started doing sports and all. She got really in, invested in her own health when she saw that she could reverse. Yeah. Oh, that's the big message, folks. Everything's reversible. Trust us. <laughs> Whatever it is, you can fix it. People at death's door can go into reverse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're talking about this particular device. These slides are a little bit jumbled, but we're going to run through a few devices, and one's called the Easy Lift. Uh, I don't know that it's saying anything, is it there in the small print, other than what we've said anyway. Um, oh, yeah, there's an important point there. Look at the last line, John. You need to make that point. If you're going for Botox, I mean, you're injecting yourself with poison, your skin is going to be inflamed and puffy for days. Uh, before it settles down. It's not, it's not a kind treatment, is it? Whereas with this, you don't have any after results or anything like that. It's the same, Keith, if you went under the knife, isn't it? You know, you've, you go under the knife and, you know, you've got all the healing to do in the first place, the scarring and everything, and it's not going to last forever because the face still goes south and you've still got to have further face mm-hmm. facelifts under the knife. But with this... You don't. You just use this at first on a regular basis, but after a while, you can just do it once a week, and then once a fortnight, once a month, and you can maintain. So you don't have to go under the knife or have Botox. Yeah, yeah, great. One of, one of the uh, one of the big features that I was looking at was we all know. I mean, you can look at any Google or whatever it is. Microcurrent has a history of increasing blood flow. Now, blood flow carries oxygen, and oxygen is what's required at the mitochondria to make energy, to make new cells. Right, and also the blood takes away toxins, of course. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, takes away toxins, of course. Extra nutrients, yeah. So one of the things that we look at is how thick is the skin that covers your face, and below that skin surface, you have muscle tissue and you have fatty, fatty acids as well, fatty tissue. So uh, if you want to, 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 uh, to, to uh, uh, increase the quality of what goes on below your skin, you need to get a lot of blood flow into your face. And one of the things that this technology does is increase that blood flow. We see it in wounds and we see it in pain. And, and it does exactly the same thing. Increase blood flow to your muscles in your face, build up your musculature, and it'll hold your skin taut as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, next up. So, oh, we'll just run through some devices. Now, you know, tell them, not everybody knows the story, but this is where we met, isn't it? I mean, you've got to hand it to the Russians. They kicked it all off. And, uh, well, it was the Cosmet device originally, wasn't it, thing that came to England. Yeah, we, we introduced this one into, uh, into uh, the USA in about, what, 2001, 2002? Yeah. 2001, yeah. Yeah. Yes. You, know, you said you had them knocking on your door to write the manual. And you did, actually, didn't you, John? You wrote, between, you wrote the manual. That, when you wrote uh, the manual. I wrote the manual back in, what, 1990? Uh, 1999? 1999, that's right. Oh, oh, yeah, that's the year I published Virtual Medicine, yeah. <laughs> and then I mean, there's other devices that, you know, I've forgotten the guy that's uh, associated with this. I've forgotten his name now. It's in, it's in my Medicine Beyond book. Yeah. Uh, there's another one called the DNAS, which is, shall we say, simpler and humbler. I can't say it's crap, I don't think that's quite true. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not quite true, but you're not paying the same money, so you know, you're not nobody's robbing anybody, I don't think. Yeah, but, one, of, one of the reasons why we kind of swayed away from the, the Russians as soon as we had an opportunity to work with an American corporation or an American company and, and bona fide engineers was that uh, we knew that we could get parts uh, with these Keenar devices. We weren't sure whenever we had a breakdown, and we had lots of those, um, we could send devices away. And how long would it take Lori for them to come back? Sometimes they didn't come back at all. So, yes, I mean, that's in the more recent years. I mean, years ago, it was a lot easier and a lot more comfortable us having to send a device away. But I mean, now it's very difficult. I mean, we could wait eight, nine weeks and someone then is without their device and, you know, they feel as though it's part of their life. 
I think I think when Brandy, uh, you know, name, the Dutch guy died, uh, things did go down it was quite steeply after that. Yeah, they uh, did. Yeah. Yeah, they cancelled the manufacturing plant in in Europe. And they hauled everything back into Russia. So yeah. when we were dealing with Jan de Jong in, in, the, in, in the Netherlands, it was a lot easier. Yeah, Jan de Jong was very easy to work with. So it's very sad, his passing. Yeah, yeah. Much, much missed. Now, I know you, you can tell us a little bit of the story, but you, you two had a hand in this device. I mean, it is your device, <laughs> essentially, isn't it? As opposed to the bigger Avatia. But the Avatia mm -hmm. Life. Yes, it is. It is a device that's exclusive to us. <laughs> now, this device has uh, more than face facials in it. Actually, you could use the 783 program and you'd have all of the other thing, the anti-inflammatory, the uh, normalizing of stress and all of this. But it will also do a wonderful job on your facial features and you have the 15 hertz, 30, the 60. It does a lot more, it'll do scar tissue. Are we still there? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, no, I can hear you good, John, that's fine. And the sound is bearing up. And the point yeah, yeah, I just, here is that you can do a lot of healing, like pains, like inflammation. Uh, this is a pain, anti-inflammatory, and it's an anti-pain device. Uh, it'll do much more than just facials, like I mentioned. And can you do vagal nerve stimulation with this one? Uh, you can do vagus nerve stimulation on 783. Yeah, okay. So you get some, uh, just for the folks that don't know what that is, the vagus nerve is a big nerve that goes to almost all your organs. And it's been a big breakthrough, hasn't it, John? Just in, just in a very few years that if you stimulate the vagus nerve electrically, you can hush, you can shut down inflammation. And this is so good. Even orthodox doctors have cottoned onto it. Uh, GlaxoSmithKline have put $50 million, I think it was, into research into this. They come up with an electronic device that you actually implant on the vagus. And of course, that's big bucks, you know, and includes surgery. Hey, listen, this little fellow will do it anyway. You use a special probe, which you'll see later, on the neck at the right place, just over the vagus nerve. Then you get 99% of the good yeah. fraction of the cost and no pain. <laughs> I might mention that the National Institutes of Health uh, here in the USA have actually just invested or are ready to, 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 to give $250 million to a company that comes up with this device. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's apply. <laughs> <Don't hold your> <laughs> <breath>. <laughs> they call it closed loop neuromodulation and the, even the National Institute of Health and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency here in the USA are looking at electronics like this device and how it stimulates the vagus nerve and, and actually uh, 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 will be able to, to feature the peripheral nervous system as the major uh, um, nervous system in the body to, to control and, and, it, control and it, it harbors the brain. Now, for the first time in history, I believe the medical system is actually going to include the brain in the healing process. So, it's, it's a big break to well, well, not the doctor's brains, they haven't got any, but I know what you're saying. <laughs> right. Uh, we already have it. Let's make a strong point, John. Which you, if you go for the, there, there are more sophisticated devices available like this. Uh, the uh, pro you sport. Know, more, you, know, you can do cosmetics, but and more. Uh, I mean, the, you know, vagal nerve stimulation has been shown to shut down autoimmune diseases, completely shut down irritable, well, you know, inflammatory bowel disease and so on. It's, it's a very significant uh, tool and it's worth considering you know, the extra money. It's, it's I'm it. actually down here in, Cal in Southern California working with uh, the uh, community, commu community health centers of Central California who oh. are adopting this technology to, uh, to uh, uh, circumvent the use of narcotic drugs. Right, and the same in Texas. I know you work there. Do you want to just tell the folks in one sentence? I'm sorry? Yeah, yes, yeah, so it's the same in, in Texas. You're doing work there, aren't you? Then uh, we've, yeah, we've completed in, in Dallas, to, in, uh, in uh, Lubbock, Texas. We have eight clinics that are using this exclusively now uh, to circumvent the use of drugs as well. So narcotic drugs, opioids are a big deal. We're trying to get them off the street, and the only way you can do it is by stop prescribing them. 
And but if you stop prescribing opiate drugs for pain, then what are you going to use in its place? <laughs> and this is where this technology is now coming out. And uh, it's, it's, it's funny that the community health centers are the ones that are actually can't, taking that torch and they're, they're running with it. Yeah, well, the doctors just still turn to their prescription pads and narcotics, despite soaring deaths. But everybody else is worried about what's going on. Here's something great. It's, you know, it's, it's easy, it's safe, it's non-addictive. You can stop and start it as you wish. And none of the side effects of narcotics. Anyway. No, I treated... Uh, I was at the community health center here in uh, in um, in uh, Obispo, um, and they 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 put they put out about they had about eight clients eight patients reserved and they thought that they could keep me busy for a couple of hours while they finished with their meetings and then come back and we would sit down and do a conference. But I finished in about forty minutes, half an hour. Everybody was done. And I had nothing to do sitting around <laughs> all my patients were fine <laughs> you should have done a facial on them all yeah, i could have yeah. done that yeah yeah now listen laurie's being sensible folks are not just here for that let's get back to cosmetics <laughs> you know, an extra you can have with these things is photodynamics what's that photodynamics is uh, is using the knowledge that we have about lights and how they actually are able to stimulate healing as well and uh, for example red light is known and uh, in 635 nanometers per second whatever uh, uh, to be able to affect cells what it does is that the cell will pick up light red light particularly and will multiply the speed of making new cells <laughs> So this one has that part of it built into the device. So you only not only have the lights, but you'll also have the, ele the, the electrical stimulation. Why would that benefit a person who's looking for the cosmetic use, John? Please explain. If you go to the next slide, I've got some uh, the colors laid out. I believe there's... Yeah. There we go. Because red activates vitality, metabolism, digestion, stimulates, stimulates circulation, you see. And the orange will activate lung and thyroid gland, which is a big deal. Uh, strengthens the stomach, stimulates building of new tissues. And the yellow is for the nervous system, the lymph and the digestion. So used as an antidepressant and brightens the soul. Oh, give me some yellow light, yeah. Yeah, so green has, uh, the knowledge that we have on green is it releases uh, mucus, phlegm, respiratory system, digestion, so on and so forth. So you have, We've, what we've done is we've built these LEDs into the device so that you'll get the added benefits of what color LEDs will do. Right, okay, well, that makes sense. So if an individual wants that as an extra, it's available. So with or without lights, anything else to say about this illustration? You can do one or the other. Um, this is a uh, this is uh this is this lady is the uh, the wife of the fellow who actually uh, manufactures for us oh right okay yeah, that's an important picture then <laughs> now, oh is... my gosh what's that <laughs> doing there <laughs> Your own beauty <laughs> look at that <laughs> the skin is polished and beautiful and that's not botox it's not a plastic face i know <laughs> yeah well I don't need Botox. <laughs> no, I have a don't. microcurrent device. <laughs> You've got it planted, isn't that the same? That's right. <laughs> uh, hanging in there, looking real good, yeah. Okay, so no, you're somewhat of our expert. I know you, obviously, you, you girls spend a lot more time on this than us guys do. So, uh, do you want to talk us through your book, Cellular Makeover? That's going to be often tonight, but you know, you can actually buy a copy if you want. <laughs> It's on Amazon, but tell it what's in the book, really? what, uh, what have you put together? Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of tips in here, but also at the back of the book, there are charts that will help guide you not only how to use the device, but what exactly what all the different points on the face mean and how that we can use, we can use the device to stimulate certain points to, you know, work your kidneys, work your bladder, work your liver or whatever. So it's also at the back of the book we have the pictures of how you use the device just for the facelift so it shows you the movements you can use and the different tools you can use and i think we're giving this book um anyone who purchases the device we're we're giving this as an ebook yeah 
right, not a, not a physical book, but they get the book anyway. They get the They'll, yes. I mean, they can buy the physical book if they want from Amazon, but we are going to give it straight away as an ebook so they can start working with the program straight away. Yeah, okay, good. Now, does it tell you things like, you know, the best frequencies to use? Yes, it does. Yeah, so, so a beginner could take this book and start it from scratch learn to work on themselves and learn very quickly what it all means. You know, yes, yes. There's a lot of tips in there as to why and how and when and how long you need to do it for and, you know, when you need to do it, when's the best time, etc. Yeah, yeah. And, and you were saying where things are. So bags would be stomach, kidney and liver. If you've got those classic lines at the side of the mouth, that looks like uh, lungs, heart and lungs coming down the side of the nose. You know, and also, you know, like if you have the little lines on your earlobes and that, you know, that's sort of heart and things like that. So it'll give you a lot of tips of what you should watch for and then how you repair those problems. Yeah. Okay, good. So let's, let's talk about the device. Um, I mean, people can get this book, they can benefit from everything you've said. And if they've got a scanner or a Nina or a letter or something like that, they can go away and do this. That's good, right? So, yes. Shutting anybody out. But if you've never thought of this before and you don't have anything you could do it with, this is a good thing to consider. Uh, as I said, bear in mind the idea of a possible option of upgrading to the thing that does more, that does vagal nerve stimulation or we'll do arthritis and all kinds of cool stuff. But on its own, this is pretty neat. You put this together, yes? As a, as a yes. And, and I see it's done in pretty bows. Is that just for Christmas? Can I do it? No, it, it, all year round it comes in this little box. Oh, wow. Really cute, so you can give it as a gift <laughs> at any time of the year. Right, and especially for our loved one if you're married and want her to look better. Yeah. Or if she wants him to look better. I've got to say, careful, hey. <laughs> if you don't know what to buy him. <laughs> uh, I can't think what's... Uh, oh, yeah, so it comes as a little kit. So describe the kit. Come on, let me take us through that. Here's the link at the bottom, look. So if you think, well, I'm in, I, I like this. I think this is a very holistic, smooth, really cool, interesting way to knock off some years in how you look. Then go to my website. We've set it up there. Alternative dash doctor dot com. Don't forget the dash slash cosmetic. Now it's all lowercase after the slash, the forward slash. It doesn't matter what you do before that, but you have to do all lowercase the cosmetic. And you'll see the, the, the photoelectric device, the basic device, the Avatia Life that I talked about. All these cool things. So tell us what's in. What is this one? It's a whole kit. So it's a device plus what? Do you want to do this, John, or do you want me to? Oh, you go ahead. Uh, okay, so the standard kit... I think you have a nice one. <laughs> so the standard kit comes with the device, with a little pouch to keep it in, so when you travel, you could just take the device with you, if that's all you would, you know, all you feel you want to carry. Then it comes with two leads, one of them which goes with the finger electrode. You need a red-black lead for that. And then a standard lead that goes with the Y electrode. The Y electrode is, it's very pleasant on the skin. It slides across um, yeah. the skin very smoothly. Have we got a picture of that? I don't think we have, have we? Um, well. See. No, we haven't. What a shame. Uh, okay, so if we do this presentation again, I'll slip a picture of that in. Of the big <laughs> Y, yes, definitely. Uh, so, called, there are two, uh, just to explain for people that think, what the hell is a Y electrode? It's unless, a, unless you have one in the box. It splits a Y. Either of you got one to show? I mean, you're both on camera, folks can see you. Either of you got a Y electrode nearby? Um, Pick it up and show it. Hold on. It's got a couple of metal balls, which are the electrodes, and it's very smooth. Here you go. <laughs> right, hold it up near the camera suite. Can you see it? Uh, yeah, just uh, again, put it a bit nearer the camera, a bit further away. Yeah, I think we can see that. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Put it on your face now so that we can see how. Yeah, then we get the scale of it. Yeah. You see? It's really smooth. It feels good on your skin. So, you know, you can do so, so much with it. Yeah, and that's current in one ball and out through the other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, and then you have the little blue finger probe, which is very useful. I mean, I find that I use the Y probe more on my face and the actual electrode directly from, on the back of the device. But 
the finger electrode is really good when you're working on areas like the very small bits around like your lips and um, under your eyes. And if you ever have sinus problems, it's really good for that. So, you know, like with your bags under your eyes or, you know, whatever, you can just use the finger probe and just keep it there. Um, and then, of course, the ebook. So that's the basic standard kit. Right, okay. And then the, the one with the photodynamics? That's exactly the same kit, but the device will come with the lights on, which we saw a picture further back in the screen. And the one with the photodynamics is a green face. It's, it has a green Z on it and on the, um, on the front of the device. Right, yeah. And the one without has the blue. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, yeah, it's a very attractive looking kit. It does the job. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure if we're down to the last uh, slide. Yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, uh, let me go see if I can find some questions. Uh, that could be tricky. Uh, I'm still sharing my screen, so I might have to knock off screen share. Uh, talk among yourselves. Come on, you two. <laughs> talk <laughs> more about what's good stuff and why they should be doing it. Well, I can see if I can find questions. Oh, here we go. Uh, the early questions, of course, were, you know, why can't I hear you? You sound like underwater. So much. Yeah, I, I think I think you have a, a microphone that that it tries to adjust to how far away you are, so that when you rock back and forth, you're going to get a faint and then a high. Right, me rocking backwards and forwards. Oh, okay. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, Linda has said the sound of you both is too bright, whatever quite that means. I can kind of guess it's got a ring to it. If you talk more slowly, it'll be mush. Oh, much easier to polish. <laughs> uh, all right, listen, these are not questions. This is complaints about the sound. Uh, somebody's saying they can see me. Well, I hope you were seeing the slides, for goodness sake. That wouldn't be much good if you didn't see my screen, which was showing the slides. Well, I am in Southern California, and I can see the slides, so I know yeah. that. Well, look, and here. I've got the slides up here, too, so. Well, here's hoping. <laughs> Listen, if it screws up, we'll just do it again. You folks are okay with We'll that. do it next week. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a good thing before Christmas. I mean, what a great idea for a Christmas present. A really unusual Christmas present, because, say, because it's for the rest of life. It's good looks and good feelings, which is a lot better than, you know, a, a, an Xbox or a new iPhone or something. <laughs> it sounds like a great idea to me. Okay, so Alexander Levitt is saying, came late and didn't see, who is Lorraine and the other men who talks? I think that means man who talks. Uh, well, I don't think I've got time to go back over that, Alexander. Uh, two very good friends, I mentioned them in the email, John and Lorraine Hasher, microcurrent specialists. Okay, Kevin Walker, this is a long one, which has to read it. Uh, uh, yeah, well, it's back to the question of using other devices, okay? Uh, hang on, it keeps jumping around. Stay where you are. Um, what frequencies uh, could you please specify? If these are below 14 hertz, then most devices will not work. Well, the Avatio microcourse and so on, and uh, easy lift do have slightly lower frequencies. Schumann frequencies, in fact. But do you want to answer that, John? Um, what, was, what was the question? Uh, well, is it a question? <laughs> you see, let me read. Oh, gosh, it keeps jumping about. What is going on? I'll try and hold it on with, a, with my cursor. You said one could use other microcurrent devices if you had one. Yes, we did say that. However, John said that you have to use body-friendly frequencies. Well, I think actually what you said is you need a device that's delivering body-friendly messages at various frequencies. Yeah, I wouldn't use a TENS device, for example. You wouldn't yeah, want to use that. that's not body-friendly. That, that trashes the nerves eventually, doesn't it? It's, uh, it's bad news. Uh, so, but could you help with the frequencies? If somebody has a dial-in device where they can choose, what would you recommend? I'm just saying or implying that his won't go below 14 hertz. I think we're struggling to hear you a bit. Um, oh, okay. <clears throat> what frequency, John? Uh, Kevin Walker wants to know. Uh, it's got to be above 14 hertz. Any, any recommended frequency? Somewhere around uh, 
when you look at these devices, there are four different sets of frequencies that have been put into this one. And not only are they a single frequency, but they go up and down. So you may have from 15 up to 20, 28 and back down again. Uh, so when you work with, uh, with, with a skinar, with a professional unit, you'll either put it on one frequency or another. You, you don't have algorithms. What you do have in the skinar are single frequencies. Uh, on the on the on the Avasia Easy Lift device, you have sets of frequencies. You have algorithms. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Sorry, John. It sounded like you hadn't finished. <laughs> yeah. There was another question. A couple of questions came up. One of them said something about. It says that you should not put it, you know, uh, uh, on your face. And now. Uh, here, here's one of the problems. This would be, let's say, on, on a device like the Avasia Life. It's not that you can't put it on your face, that it's predicated on TENS devices, and TENS devices you should not put on your face. Or anywhere else. Or anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> as far as that goes. And so we, because it's predicated on the TENS devices, you have to remember this technology is a thousand times weaker than the TENS device. Yeah. No, it's in the same the frequency heart. as your brain and as your heart. So it's stronger in the homeopathic sense, right? It's mild. Yes. The body, the body really tunes to it. Yeah. So don't, don't worry too much about what they say in the booklet. That's predicated on the TENS. Yeah. That's the only way that they were allowed to make claims with the FDA. Yeah. And someone has also ask if you can use the device if you have dental implants. Well, yes, there's no... It would be preferable to do so because yeah. it would solidify your implant. Yes. All right, now I've got a question. You guys must be seeing the questions too, are you? They're popping up on the bottom of the screen. They just flash in and flash out. Oh, okay. All right, we're learning something. Uh, but I didn't get the Kevin Walker one. You, di you didn't get it? Okay. No. Am I, I'm still sharing my screen. Hmm. Can you not see it? No. Okay, I'll read it again. Uh, you said that one could use other microcurrent devices if you had one. Uh, however, John said it had to have body-friendly frequencies. And we just explained that. It's body-friendly signals, really, Kevin. And uh, John's just told you about the frequencies. So I think we've dealt with that one. Yes, it's just that not a TENS type device. Yeah, exactly. We dealt with that. So Stephanie is asking, what's the warranty? That's a good question. <laughs> Mind the medicine. <laughs> How long is the warranty? <laughs> Does she, do you mean the warranty on the face, Stephanie, or you mean the machine? <laughs> the <joke laughs> well, the devices have a warranty of one year, yeah. but they very rarely go wrong anyway, so we don't really have any issues. And if they did go wrong, the factory would repair them. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, we, we've had nothing but good experience. No, it's they're always been good. And they, they will just turn something around real quick if there's a problem. Uh, somebody wants to learn more about the colours, but let me take this one first. Can I use these two devices for my... Where, oh gosh, they do keep jumping around. Brenda, can I use these two devices for my husband's enlarged prostate or my asthma, meaning her asthma? <coughs> so two questions in one there. You could use uh, uh, the only the only caveat when I'm on a platform and I'm talking to groups of people. Uh, devices that are medical devices have a non-label and an off-label application. A non-label application for the Avasia Life would be pain management, prostatic pain, so on and so forth. Prostatic enlargement, yes, that's going to be pain as well. Definitely with the Avasia Life. Mm -hmm. There are no medical claims on the facial because the FDA don't care much about cosmetics. They only care about medical devices. And cosmetology is, does not, is not considered by the FDA as a medical device. But here in Canada, the Easy Lift is considered, is under the medical device section. Yes, it is. Because it is, a, it is, you know, cleared as that here. As a type 2 medical device. Yes. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay. Uh, really, what the, the fuller answer to Brenda, we haven't time for the fuller answer, but she really needs at least the Avaxia life. She does. To be dealing with prostatic enlargement and asthma. And these devices are great. You know, there's, there's lots of possible... I mean, 
Yeah. Well, the Russians, they used to boast, didn't they? 100% success with benign prostatic hypertrophy. Remember those? Yeah, BPH is, the, is, is what it's all about. Yeah. I mean, let's, let's you know, it's a slide over the 100%, but it was certainly damn effective, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, okay, Alexander Levitt. Uh, Alexander asked a question further up, which is, to, you know, what's this about? Uh, yes, we, you know, the cosmetic devices is what we're talking about, Alexander looking after the face and getting rid of wrinkles, but we're just throwing in a bit of medical here too. So he's back with another question later later on. Is, does, is, is, oh gosh, that's not so English. Alexander may be foreign. <laughs> is a device come with any training DVD? So he's saying, is there a training DVD with this? We've got people from all over the world on this webinar, by the way. Uh, you know, we yeah. should really put, well, we should put something together, shouldn't we, to actually go over how to use it on the face, but the yeah. book does cover it. The book, the book does cover it, and there, there are several um, uh, DVDs that you'll find on a, a, a website that we own called easy, easyzifacial.com. Okay, that one again, www.easyzifacial.com. Easyzifacial Right, now for those of you who are not Americans, it's ZZI, E Z Z I. In England, the Z is a Z. Uh, so, you know, but there's no gap and no dash, yeah? It's just all the way. It's a tomato, a tomato. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just no dash, no gap. Yeah, okay. Uh, now, Sumeril said, would you please talk more about the vagus nerve and the device? Uh, uh, we will uh, for a moment, Sue, but let me tell you, there's a marvelous link if you eat. It's saying answer by text while they talk to you. Maybe what I'll do is go and copy a link for a brilliant webinar that uh, John Lorraine did for me earlier this year, uh, about eight or nine months ago. And it was lasted over two hours with all the questions, but vagal nerve stimulation was a very key part of that and explained in full. You're, you're right, it is very fascinating. But I'll send you the link to that webinar, uh, that earlier webinar. Uh, can we say anything else quickly so that we don't, yeah, oh. About uh, that biggest nerve about anything else. Yeah, while, while you're doing that one, there's another one. Anne Jarvis Bernard uh, from France. Oh, no, it's, sorry, that's, is she in France? And it says Anne Jarvis Bernard and then Anne Jarvis France. So maybe Anne Jarvis is in France. I'm not, not clear. <laughs> can you tell me the vagus nerve setting for the scanner device? Well, there's a few scanners. Yeah, the, uh, the, <clears throat> the setting, the, now here's the deal about the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve activates at 783 hertz. Yeah. When you are, you are either in fight or flight, or you're in eat, sleep, digest, and assimilate mode. In eat, sleep, digest, assimilate mode, your digestive system and everything works at seven hertz. <laughs> Yeah, human waves, yeah. The human waves. Mm -hmm. When you are in fight or flight, you are beta and beyond. If you're in beta, the vagus nerve is disconnected. And the brain sends a flurry of activity to the rest of the body, creating inflammation, inflammatory cytokines, tumor necrosing factors, and it goes on and on and on. Don't so, get too many naughty words, John. To <laughs> yeah. the public, not too many naughty words, right? Uh, sorry, I, I, sorry. Inflammatory cytokines just mean body, a storm of body chemicals that inflames everything and they're bad news. Yeah. That's right. So <laughs> I'm sorry, I slip into that professional. Yeah, you slip out. <laughs> <laughs> slip out a bit quick. All right, Norma, Norma has a little concern. It's easily answered, but she thinks LED lights are not good for the eyes, are they good for the skin? We don't shine these devices into your eyes, no more. But anyway, go on and answer that, John. Although it wouldn't cause any harm, not like laser would. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, just we don't do it. You know, you can put it on the skin and it won't. Yeah. Uh, even if you're doing bags under your eyes, you're not shining the light into it. No, because if you're doing bags under your eyes, you're either using the electrode directly under the eye or you're using an attachment and then the device is in your hand somewhere else so you know you don't really get the opportunity to shine it in your eyes yeah okay yeah now brenda schwartz asked a good question does she need to get the sports pro 3 for those issues and of course she'd like you know she wants the best obviously and that is the best it's the bee's knees 
and it will do everything and more. I mean, it will be, you know, do chakra frequencies and uh, all, all kinds of cool stuff like that. Uh, it's got, what, 53 algorithms, is it? That's 53 algorithms plus the ABA, which is unlimited amount. You do your own programs as well, your own frequency. Yeah, yeah. So to learn more about that, first of all, email us. But you can, if you go to alternative-doctor.com, like along the bottom, but it's forward slash MCT webinar, and MCT for microcurrent therapy. MCT webinar, you'll... Uh, it, it, that features the Sport Pro there, tell you what to do. But if you want to email us, do. Uh, that's perhaps going a little bit fancy. You know, it's a brilliant device. I've got one, I love it. I think it's the, one of the, yeah, it must be the best device on the market. And with all those algorithms, I mean, it does so many things, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Uh, compared to the, the Skinner, Skinner has uh, two algorithms, and this one has 53. Yeah. So then, I think, you know, you know, one of the things that we should say is when we're, you're looking after your health and also your face, etc., your body, your cellulite and all the other things, it's the best that you should go for the best you can afford. Right. And if you want, you know, if you're, you're at all anything like a professional therapist, a practitioner, you know, kind of any of those, don't hesitate. Yet, because you'll want to upgrade. And, and I'm sorry, folks, but you know, if you want, if you upgrade, we're with you. It's a great idea to upgrade, but we have to charge a restocking fee because we end up with the one you didn't want when you finally move up to the one that's the best. All right. Yeah. Anyway, listen, Jacqueline Inish is asking about the drawing, showing how the uh, how to work on the neck and the arrows going from the collarbone up to the chin. It looks like they go over the thyroid. Is this okay, or should you keep away from the thyroid? That, that would, Quick as is get the book, isn't it? But do you want to answer that one of you? Yeah, we do. We do uh, teach our students to stay away from the, the thyroid itself. If you want to access the thyroid, do it through C seven, C six, C five. Yeah, uh, through okay. the cervical spine, through the back. Right. When I work on the neck, I just go over the area, so I don't stop. I just move straight past it, sort of just straight over it. So. So you're, you're working here at the thyroid, so you'll be working under the chin, yeah. lavella and, and above. So you're, you're away from the thyroid. Right, okay. All right, Pamela Velas asked me a question. Again, what's the warranty? It's 12 months formal warranty. They will help you with any faultiness of the device. Well, John and Lorraine will help, and I will help anyway. I stand by these. And the return policy. Now, I've got to tell you what I just said and make sure it's clear. Uh, a lot of people buy the, the, the least expensive because they think, you know, why should, why should I spend more money? And very quickly they wish they bought a more expensive device because it can do so much more. We'll help you change, but we have to charge a $200 restocking fee because we end up with the old device that we then can't sell as new. So you need to be clear about that. Uh, but in every other way, we are just good guys and we cooperate. If you don't like it, send it back. <laughs> and we'll give you all your money back minus a couple hundred dollars, okay? And now Pamela's also asked another question. Uh, how does EMF fields affect the body and collagen? My God, I thought we'd spend an hour telling you that. <laughs> can, and, and here's an important question though. Can dirty EMF fields cause premature aging? You're right, until you're dead. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it, it actually causes a stress factor that the body tries to adapt to. Mm. It's in, back used in every way, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. And if you look at telomeres and telomerase, we know that tele, telomeres will, will, will shorten faster in a stressed environment. Yeah. The age yeah past. We, we, we're all worried about the effect on the heart and brain and so on, we're worried about some wrinkles on the skin. If you're living in dirty EMF, it's emerged as being very dangerous, really. Ellis Hebert, hi, Ellis from Australia. Don't say which city, but I'm into Brisbane and Sydney, but not on Melbourne or Perth here. We had a great time. Do you have a distributor in Australia? Uh, in Brisbane, yeah. We have somebody that works with us in Brisbane. Ah, uh, okay. So if Alice is in Brisbane, he might be disappointed. But if he's in Perth, which is what, 3,000 miles away, <laughs> Uh, can, he, can he email you or shall we email? Yes, get him to email us and we'll see what we can do. Right. Takes it that the battery device, the device is battery powered, are they rechargeables? No. No, good. 
It but is, they last a very long time. Yeah, that's what of course, microphone, go figure, mm. last a year. <laughs> Do I need a prescription for the Evazia life? Well, uh, you remember there was some trouble here in the US that uh, some medically... Yeah, if, in principle in the US you would need a prescription. But if they buy it from you, or buy it mean, through you, then you would supply it from Canada, we, we sidestep all that, don't we? We have bus loads of people that travel to Canada. <laughs> And then, since, yeah, since yeah, Donald, was, Donald Trump has taken over, I, I think that it, 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 kind of bro, it kind of broke our websites. Apparently, it, it <laughs> has fallen because of so many people that are applying to come to Canada. You can, you don't have to come to Canada to buy a device. We can <laughs> ship you one. We'll, we'll ship it. Yeah, we've gone into the we've gone into the legals, and uh, we're quite happy to supply by, by Canada. We're not cheating or breaking the law. Sneaky, it's just that it doesn't apply. Yeah. It's not being prescribed in the USA. All right, so listen, I've got a rash of things. Please send me the link for the Vegas nerve stimulation. So that's the last year's webinar. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, yeah, thanks to Tom S for giving us the easyfacial.com. I saw that pop up. Thanks, Tom. Someone sent the actual spell in to easyfacial.com because others were having problems. And uh, so it, it is easy Z I. Yes. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> Sorry, I mucked that up, I guess. <laughs> uh, Brenda's asking, Brenda's, she, gosh, she's very interested, Brenda. Uh, does the, uh, the Avacia, Avacia Pro 3, does it, does it have the light feature? No. No, okay. Uh, I mean, you, you can, can't you broadcast colors and light frequencies, I'm trying to remember. You put it through a prism. Yeah, no, no, don't be sarcastic. <laughs> uh, no, Brenda, so afraid not. Uh, That's special uh, to the anonymous, easy Anonymous viewer asked, please say more about what Avatia Life will do compared to lesser model. For instance, the easy list says it will TX scar tissue. How much better does the Avatia do? TX treatment? Treatment prescription? Yeah, what is that, sweetie? TX, it's just said the just two letters, TX. Oh, I don't know. Guess what that's short for. Or oh, treat. Uh, that treat. same person has just answered for me. So it says, uh, easily, I would say, we'll treat the scar tissue, but the Vaxia Life does it better. I mean, to, just do a quick comparison. This person is clearly interested in the possibility. That yeah, the, the Vaxia Life, there are free. Now, if we look at collagen fiber, um, collagen in your body is water bound. And it acts as a proton jump system and, and, and completes communication to every one of your cells. And then this is the new knowledge of our new physics. The, uh, what happens with scar tissue, you might say, yes, but scars are also collagen, which they are, but they are devoid of water. And when you devoid collagen of its water, it becomes a capacitor where it builds a charge. When it has water, when it is water bound, it becomes a communication system or conductor. So what, and scars are known to build electricity all the way to one and a quarter, one and a half volts. That's a lot of electricity built into a scar. And you know, God only knows what will happen to the tissues or the other organs and tissues that need to manufacture energy through ATP. And the, you'll blow your whole, electrical system through that scar that has built and that has built up an electrical capacity the uh, the avasia life has this the the frequency that neutralizes the electrical buildup we don't necessarily have that in the in the uh, uh, easy lift easy lift device mm -hmm. it right. is specific to 77 hertz but you could, I mean, the Avastia Life is the one you want if you're interested at all, really, in the vagus nerve stimulation technique, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, you wouldn't use the easy lift for that. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to. Yeah. So, so that alone, you know, if you, if you want to use it to treat, you know, auto, autoimmune disease and allergies and, and things like that, all of which are inflammation based, you need the, the vagus nerve. Technique. Yeah. Then you have to have the Avastia Life. We, I just realized we don't have a price up here, but if you go to the, you know, the website, I showed it here at the bottom, uh, Dr. Oh, oh shoot. Uh, yeah. 
uh, alternativedoctor.com slash cosmetic. Uh, you'll see it there, and it's actually $1,250. Uh, you can buy a fuller and more sophisticated kit too, but the basic device is $1,250, so it's a bit less than $500 more, isn't it? Mm. So for all that extra power and punch, you know, you can be treating broken bones and uh, wounds. Uh, I mean, your little uh, treatment of Lexion that you can see on YouTube, Laurie, that, that would work with the, with the Abatia Life, wouldn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. But I wouldn't use the Easy Lift because it wouldn't really have the right frequencies to do what I'd need to do for a for something like Alexi. Yeah, well, some people know what Alexi is. He's a lovely, gorgeous little dog. Broke his shattered and going to have it amputated. Uh, and a quick uh, quick finish, he it was healed within a days or less than a week. Uh, the vet changed his mind about the amputation. Is that right? I mean, yes, wrong. and actually said perhaps that perhaps the x-ray was incorrect. <laughs> yeah, and you can see how the x-ray is like shattered into that. <laughs> Well, Crazy. <laughs> it couldn't have happened, therefore it didn't. All right, so I don't know if we've emphasized this enough. I mean, three people now have repeated the question. Please be clear about the difference between the Easy Lift and the Avatsia Life. So I'll give it back to you in a minute. But the Easy Lift is less expensive and will do all the cosmetic good things we've talked about. The Avatsia Life costs a little more. will do all the good cosmetic things we've talked about. And why you're here, but it has tremendous additional health and medical potential. Anything else that we can do to make this difference clear? See, Alexander. No, I think that's a really good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, and and you will find we have videos. So you mentioned a video. We will shoot a cosmetic video as well. But to make it clear to folks, when we did the last year's webinar, we did follow-up uh, webinars as well, showing people how to use the device and how to get the best out of it. And there are three one hour, I mean roughly one hour if you would take, uh, webinars on how to use the Avatia Life. There are also three for the Pro, but we're not talking much about the Pro for tonight. But some folks I think definitely probably plumb for the Avatia Life. It's, it's very superior and it's, as I said, far more than just cosmetic. We already have three pre instructional videos online. You don't have to pay for those. You can just go and listen to me picking Laurie and John's brains. <laughs> and they're very good. People have found those extremely useful. Okay, now I think we've got one last question. Otherwise, we've probably covered everything. I've been looking for the tech sheet on the Avatia Life. I can't find or see the Avatia Life on the Avatia website. No, there's an AvatiaLife.com website, isn't there? Help, help this person, he's called Tom. I think, isn't the information on the Avasia Life device, John, is that on the Academy sales? It would be on the Academy sales. There is a tech sheet on there. Yeah. Um, what's yes. that website then? So that is called theacademysales.com. And you'll be able to see the different devices there and then the tech sheets are attached to each one. Yeah. Okay. I hope that should be sufficient. <laughs> Okay, well, we've run out of questions. I think we've run out of time. We've done pretty well, anyway. Uh, <coughs> oh, hang on. <coughs> no question. Melissa, is there going to be a replay? Well, I hope so, Melissa. <laughs> if you weren't here at the beginning, your guys was all fingers and thumbs and sweat getting it going. It's that first time in using this particular system, the Zoom. But I believe that it's been recorded and we'll replay it. If it screws and we can't get a good recording, We'll redo it, so look out for a message. We'll do it again next week. <clears throat> but I've got every reason to be confident. I think, you know, I think we're good. Um, I'll, be, I'll be sitting beside my wife next time. Uh, yes. <laughs> if I let you. <laughs> now, there's one other thing. I, I'm, I'm kind of a bit loath to cancel the webinar until I've answered these questions. You know, folks have said, send me the link. So I'm just a bit afraid that if I close the webinar, I'll, I'll lose the chance to text them. So folks, I'm going to wrap it up formally and say we're done, and John and Laurie might actually disappear in the next minute or two when we say goodnight, but I'm not going to actually close the webinar until I've taken down the slides, gone and got the link for the webinar, 
and then answer do you hear. The, the, the question box is rather interesting, you know, it says you can answer it live, but it also says answer by text. So if I just get the link and paste it into each of these boxes, should work, shouldn't it? It should, should do. do. I just, yeah. As I say, I just don't want to risk losing these boxes yeah. by closing the whole webinar. <laughs> so I think we're done. I think it's been good. And I think Zoom is for us. We just need to practice a bit more. But, uh, apart from those hiccups with the sound at the beginning, uh, I think we're okay, but you know, maybe we'll get a nasty shock when we hear the recording. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm trying to lean, lean forward and speak loudly. And uh, next time we'll probably try. What I didn't say to you, good folks, is I'm booming house. I'm sat in a completely empty room with a table, a chair, and a computer screen, and that's all I've got in the house. The, yeah. the engineer came and fixed up the internet only about four hours ago. I need to, to take a picture of that. Like that. <laughs> and all the other good things, so I apologize for that. <clears throat> I must say I didn't notice any, any change at all in yours, John. And Laurie, your sound seemed to be good and strong. So maybe it's what John suggested, that the, you know, the Apple, the, you know, the Mac here is trying to adjust in some way and getting it slightly wrong. But yeah. next time I'll have the full on professional desktop mic anyway. So thanks for coming. That was it. Say good night, folks. <laughs> you too. Night, night, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Right. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I, hope, I hope we all tune in on, the, uh, on another broadcast with Keith Scott Mummy. I think it's, it's, these are wonderful. Thank you so much, Keith. Thank right. you, Keith. Take okay. care. Thanks. Okay, now don't go away, folks. <laughs> they're, they're gone. They're about to sign themselves off. But I am. Oh, am I? Wait a minute. I'm trying to get out of this. Time. Oh, there we go. There we go. Which means that I now go to uh, um, uh, that was trying to get somebody on the webinar. Can I close that? No, let's try and work from here and uh, use my drive to find. Uh, Yes, drive. <clears throat> and here I've got some important links of which um, here. So I call that webinar Medicine's Greatest Revolution. And you'll see why when you watch the video. Okay, so I'm going to come back and do, oh, oh, Lord. Uh, oh. Have I happened? Oh no. Uh, oh gosh. Have I, have I gone and wrecked it? Uh, oh no, I'm still there. My picture's still there. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Back to the question and answer box. Okay. So it'll take me a minute, folks. Uh, hmm. uh, yeah, other replies. Thanks, Dave. And the anonymous viewer replied as well. Uh, and thanks, Brenda. Let me send you this. I can't remember who asked now, so I'll just uh, send it kind of willy-nilly to you. Uh, is there an instruction book for the Scanar? Uh, well, you say Scanar, you mean the ones that were on offer here? Uh, yes, uh, the Scanar is a different device, and it depends who you got it from. Uh, and Jarvis, uh, again, I'll, you know, if I just see some interesting questions, I'll send you the link anyway. Uh, Tom, yeah, you need this Tom too. Um, um, okay, that's probably suitable as well. Uh, so, uh, oh, at the MCT webinar, yeah, you're right. I mean, that's the, the if you want to watch the webinar, here it goes for you, Sumero. So, so that's to actually watch the webinar. Um, um, this is not easy. <laughs> uh, um, I think it is. Oh, yes, here. Yeah, so Anna asked. I think I've already sent it to you. I think I'll send it again. Gosh, there turned out to be 44 questions in the end. We started off with only about 15. Um, and 
So you may get more than one reply. It's not easy to see exactly who I've replied to. Um, Brenda, you, I've given it to you definitely, but you definitely need to watch that webinar before you commit to a device. Uh, maybe Kevin to. And the rest is all about the poor sound we had at the beginning, for which I apologize. I don't quite understand, but I shall be on to the you know, customer service people tomorrow. Uh, okay, so I'm going to stop the, um, stop the webinar. I can figure out how to do it. <laughs> there, end the meeting. All right, so take this out of my way. So good night, folks. Be nice to work with you, and thanks for all for coming. As I said, there was over 100 people. Uh, now limits 100, so we'll have to have to schedule a replay. Uh, take care, and uh, if we don't see you between now and Christmas, have some great holidays. But you're still at work for the next two or three weeks. Okay, bye.